Hello and welcome to the 14th consecutive episode of Close to Home. I'm your host, Lenny Orloff. Back in April of this year, we started these weekly shows as a way to temporarily offer an opportunity for older adults to safely connect to government, nonprofits, and other community members via a safe online format. It's also available on the phone, so if you join us that way, welcome. At the time, we thought it might last until the summer. Then we thought about it and said, let's run this through the summer. And now here we are at the beginning of fall, continuing to bring you these stories of health, tech, and resilience with captions in Arabic, Chinese, English, Korean, Russian, and Vietnamese. These captions are available both live and on YouTube by clicking on the gear under the video and selecting one of these seven languages. Today's show, more so than over a dozen that preceded it, is a story. It's a history and a look at the future of a tradition in Seattle's African-American community. In just a few minutes, we'll be joined by Paul Mitchell and William Lowe for an unscripted conversation about their lives over the past half a century and what participating in the breakfast group and roots relatives of old timers in Seattle has meant for them. We'd like this to be a real conversation. So if you are joining us online, please type in your comments right away, even while Paul and William are speaking. And if you're calling in on the phone, please wait to be unmuted. We'll pause every 10 to 15 minutes to get your input. And to help me, I think I went a little bit too far here. To help me with all that, I'd like to welcome my City of Seattle colleagues, Michael Taylor Judd and Harrison Lee, who will be today's moderators. They will gather all your questions and pass them along to me and our guests. And with any questions related to aging or disability, we encourage you to please call 1-844-348-5464 and speak to a Community Living Connections advocate. They can help locate a wide range of resources, including food and meals. That call is always free, interpretation is available upon request, and services offered are professional, confidential, and most are also free of charge. Again, the number is 1-844-348-5464. You may also visit them on the web at Community Living connections.org to see the list of participating organizations in the network and learn about the full range of the services that they provide. Again, communitylivingconnections.org. The reason that today we're meeting virtually and not out in the park is the global coronavirus pandemic. We know that African Americans are three times more likely to be affected by COVID-19. This year, the good times are just not worth the risk. As Labor Day weekend approaches, we'd like everyone to be aware of Washington State's coronavirus response website, which is at coronavirus.wa.gov. It's available in English and 35 other languages. According to it, staying home is still safest. So we could ensure the state's safe start and that it's successful. We're encouraged to stay as close to home as possible. But if we must go out, we're asked to please continue social distancing and wearing facial coverings, which are required statewide in public settings, both indoors and outdoors. Coronavirus.wa.gov has all the latest info 
on the state's response to COVID-19. You can also reach them by phone by calling Washington State Department of Health Assistance Hotline at 1-800-525-0127. Again, 1-800-525-0127. But being mindful of public health regulations doesn't mean we can't celebrate the story tradition of roots. Along with their stories, Paul and William are planning to share with us some great photos, including this one of Paul and King County Council member Larry Gossett at last year's picnic on September 1st, 2019. They're out in Jimi Hendrix Park in front of a brick building that houses the Northwest African American Museum. Before welcoming Paul and William on today's show, I'm excited to announce that next week we'll be joined by the museum's executive director, Lanisha De De Laban. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing the name correctly. We'll get a chance to practice it next week. Lanisha will give us a preview of another annual event, Grandparents Day, which she and the chair of the Mayor's Council on African American Elders, Brenda Charles Edwards, are the keynote speakers for. We'll also hear from my City of Seattle colleagues in the Department of Transportation, SDOT. Allison Schwartz will cover several SDOT initiatives, including the department's plan to continue making Seattle streets safer for older adults. As with all of our virtual events, you can find the September 10th episode of Close to Home in the same virtual place, bit.ly forward slash H friendly live. No spaces, but each word is capitalized. And it's going to be, as always, at the same time as today, 1030 AM. So now it is my pleasure to welcome Paul Mitchell and William Lowe to today's Close to Home. Paul is the co-founder of the Breakfast Group and a member of the Roots Planning Committee and of the Mayor's Council on African American Elders. William is Seattle Parks Board Commissioner and a member of the Roots Planning Committee. He also served as the Master of Ceremonies at the annual picnic. William, Paul, I very much appreciate you being here today. We have you joining us through another uh, online meeting, so I'm going to switch over to that. Uh, and uh, please remember to go ahead and unmute your microphones so that um, we can um, so we can hear you on the show. Okay, thank you, thank you for inviting me and William Lowe to be on your program. I've been a member of uh, the Roots Committee for going, be, this would have been the 19th year. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, William will tell you how long he's been on there. I think he was almost born on the, on, on the committee. Uh, you know, <laughs> we, are, we are dedicated uh, community activists. Uh, William and I, have lived in the central area all our life. You know, that's, you know, I hate to tell you how old we are. William's, William is a little younger, but he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a man of a lot of wisdom. And, uh, and I'm always, and I'm always pleased to have William along with me because he is a good articulator of information because he's worked in the um, radio and the social medias for a long time. So I'm gonna let uh, William talk about himself and perhaps give some overview of the Roots uh, celebration. That sounds great. William?
William, I think you might be muted. All right. I, 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 heard, I think I heard you just a second ago. Okay, let's try it again. You still there? There you are. All right, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, if I push the right button, the microphone comes on, doesn't it? Yeah, and uh, by the way, William, uh, something I meant to mention to our uh, uh, viewers is uh, if you find that uh, the, the sound is not coming through uh, all the way uh, as high as you would expect, we do encourage you to go ahead and turn on your, um, your closed captioning in the language uh, of your choice. Um, and and uh, our apologies for this technical difficulty. Go ahead, William, sorry about the interruption. It's okay. I was just saying a uh, little witticism. It sounded as though Paul was about to uh, reveal his age, since he said we had uh, we have been uh, on the uh, in this city, born and raised in this city for me, for a very long time. And then he did the disclaimer and said that I was a little younger than he was, and I appreciate that. I'll send the dollar over to your public relations firm for, uh, for that wonderful comment. It's a pleasure to be here, especially in these challenging times where we find that we are not this year, and it would have been this Sunday, uh, able to have the gathering, which is year number 48 of the Roots Picnic, relatives of old timers in Seattle. But uh, these old timers have stretched out, and over the years, 48, we have found a number of people who uh, either have uh, affiliation with Seattle, relatives in Seattle, would just like to come and gather and let us know that they're alive and well in a Spokane or a Yakima or wherever they may find themselves living these days. It's just a wonderful gathering. It really is more so not just a picnic, not just a celebration, but it's like a reunion of those who have roots in uh, the Pacific Northwest. That's great. Um, I understand uh, William and Paul, and if Paul, if you want to chime in, I, I think you do have to unmute yourself over um, on your device there. Uh, I understand that there's a connection between the, you know, Roots annual picnic that's been going on for almost half a decade, not a decade, half a century, I should say. Um, yes. So there, there's, I believe there's a connection between that annual tradition and the breakfast group. And I'm uh, bringing up that uh, that web page right now with the breakfast group uh, for folks to see. Did either of you uh, want to speak to to that uh, organization? Sure. Uh, the breakfast group was uh, formulated in uh, 1976 uh, by a bunch of uh, young businessmen, black businessmen at that time. We were young and we were just now getting into the mainstream of, of the business world. And there wasn't many blacks involved. So we thought that we would get together and compare notes on how we were doing in our different organizations and companies that we were working for at that time. And so we started meeting at breakfast, you know, just to, just to kick around and see if we can help each other or do anything that they needed done or give them some information that would help them in their jobs. That was uh, in 1976, and it was just breakfast. Then we decided, eh, we got to do more than this. You know, we have an opportunity to help our community in a big way. So we decided to formulate a form the what we call today a breakfast school, which is involved with the education, the role modeling, of, and, and job seeking of our young black males. And this is a, a black male organization. And our, our uh, objectives was to get our young black males involved in a process that will afford them a good education, keep them out of the the uh, jails, uh, and then 
uh, afford them a good job so they can raise uh, a family uh, uh, like a normal uh, uh, person. So we went to work doing this. So we've been doing this for the breakfast group uh, since 1976. As you can see, this is uh, 2020. So we've been at this a long time. We have, uh, we have a program called uh, Project Mister, and that we have, and we have a big celebration at the Four Seasons uh, downtown that we recognize all our youth from six or so different high schools. And we uh, teach them, you know, and what we really do is, is connect them up with some of the uh, big uh, businesses around town and we try to connect them so when they come to this luncheon, they'll be able to talk to somebody that's in their influential positions. So this is uh, one of the things that we do. Now I'm gonna let uh, William chin in and talk about our, uh, our other programs and some other things that we do. William, you wanna? Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Paul. And, and William, you, uh, uh, you are muted at the moment, so uh, if you just click that button there, I think that should work. How about now? Looks good. Good, good. Paul is one of the co-founders of the Breakfast Group, and he may not have in his modesty mentioned that, but the, the idea of the Breakfast Group was to, as Paul um, alluded to, was to have men uh, help our young men who are in high school uh, have a sponsorship, have uh, mentors, have influence to encourage them to uh, keep on with their education, set goals, meet those goals, and uh, have a mission in life, and then have that mission come to fruition. And so we are there for these young men in uh, six different area high schools the entire year. And it doesn't stop there because these actually are friendships that are for life. Um, we do not leave these young men and it is from a personal standpoint, just wonderful to have these young men later in life say, you know, thank you for coming into my life and being there and being supportive. And along that line, if I can just segue, it was uh, the, the 70s that like any organization, the Roots Committee found themselves challenged with uh, organizational um, structure. And at that time, the uh, partnership relationship with the Breakfast Group was formed and the Breakfast Group became a very intricate part, not only in their visibility, but in their financial ability and in their presence uh, to be supportive of the continuation of the Roots Pick. And this is, uh, as I said, been just a marvelous relationship uh, that has gone on all these years. Great, thank you. Thank you for telling us about the the, the Mister. Uh, is is this is it called uh, Project Mister? Uh, yeah, Project Mister is just one of the projects that the Breakfast Group uh, does, and, and I might also add that in that relationship, what leads to this annual luncheon, and it is a luncheon of celebration, is that a segment of it is called Tie One On tied like in necktie because at the your junior year your senior year it's time for those individuals during the summer to find themselves in someone's program someone's job upward mobility uh, availability to go out and interview and to land a job and what do you need when you go to an interview you need a shirt and a tie and uh, we are proud to say that everyone in the breakfast group knows how to tie a double Windsor necktie. And we pass this along year after year to these young men who come into our lives and thusly, uh, we are in their lives. Wonderful, I, I just um, flashed there on the screen uh, images of the tie on luncheon uh, with, the, uh, with those young men looking all dapper and ready for you know, for the world to to to, yes. to, to take on the world, uh, yes. and and thank you so much for being uh, such a positive influence in their lives. 
Uh, I'm sure they, they they may not appreciate it as much now, but they they will eventually. You know. Uh, well, we we found early on that uh, even in our ranks, there were some that needed a refresher course in tying a double Windsor uh, tie knot because many people just kind of sling it around, make somewhat of a gesture in trying to tie the tie properly. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those folks who um, once, I, I remember this is an interesting uh, tidbit. Um, back in 2000, uh, I would became a naturalized citizen of this country. Um, and for my naturalization ceremony, I really wanted to look good. Uh, but I didn't know how to tie a tie, so uh, some uh, uh, somebody who I was I was a student at the University of North Carolina at the time, uh, and somebody from from my dorm, uh, she tied a tie for me. She tied it properly, uh, and I, yes. I I wore it for the naturalization ceremony, uh, and to this day, 20 years later, I still have that tie with that knot because uh, first of all, it's meaningful. And yet, sadly, I still don't know how to tie it. So, <laughs> and, and, and in the and in the third note, what you did was you slid it all the way down, you know, pulled it up over your head for security. And uh, anytime you need it, you can slip your head back through that wonderfully tie, and uh, and, and slide the knot back up. That, that's what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> so thank you for teaching those young men that uh, fairly essential skill that I still yeah. need to work on. All right, uh, what about um, what about Paul? Paul, do you have anything to add yeah, to I that? Do, uh, you can see it here. You know, you're probably wondering, how did the heck do uh, an organization like the Breakfast Group get involved with the Roots uh, celebration of picnic? Well, let me tell you, what happened was that the Roots Committee became, just like I am now, became old. <laughs> And so they begin to die out. And so they begin to be fringe and didn't have many members left. So we, we hear about it through the grapevine that this organization, the Roots, and these wonderful uh, pioneers of our community were in trouble. So we took it up upon ourselves to get in contact with this organization, the Roots, organization, which really started in the 1970s. Yeah. A lady named Arlene uh, Yarbrough and her husband, and, and she had a young son who was about my, my age. We got in contact with them and said that, you know, we know you guys are having a tough time trying to get your organization off the ground and you don't have many members because the Roots Picnic is not uh, paid but it's a volunteer uh, organization. Nobody has, I'm chair only by default. Nobody else want to do it. So I became the chair. And uh, so we put, so but they didn't have the membership. So the breakfast group took it for themselves, appointed, I asked a couple of us, Ernie Dunstan uh, and myself, if we would go over and help them get their organization uh, re-kicked and restarted and because it was such a, a, a worthwhile and a wonderful organization that we really needed so to see if we would go over and put it together and continue. This was in, this was in uh, 2002 mm -hmm. and uh, we've been doing it ever since then. Ernie did it the first four or five years and I've been doing it since then and we've had a, a wonderful relationship uh, and again I mean uh, we emphasize uh, William Lowe is a member of the, of the breakfast group, and, and without yeah. him being on the uh, on the board of the, for the park department, uh, perhaps we wouldn't get a lot of the funding we get to keep to continue to put this uh, picnic on. And uh, it's a real necessary because uh, the center area is is fast faded, and, uh, and it, it breaks my heart every time I go through the center area to look at the, the buildings and, and the schools and the things that we. Uh, used to see and attend the, the old East Madison YMCA. You know, the, the things we took for granted, we, we never thought that these things would disappear. Let me tell you, they're gone. And, and, and now it's justified that you highly recognize your own community. 
we've been been here over 70 years. So, you know, that's how we got involved, trying to preserve something that we feel real, real, real secret about. You know, and, and if I could just echo just a couple of things that Paul has alluded to. One is, if this is a village, this is a neighborhood effort, and it is incumbent upon us, and we encourage others, not only to just participate, but certainly to be involved in what happens with the preservation and the legacy that we call the central area, the CD, the Roots Picnic. At one time, the Roots Picnic was affectionately known as the Old Timers Picnic. And yes, absolutely, you've heard it before, I'll say it right now. If you live long enough, you're going to get old. And so I'm proud to be one of those old timers who lends his voice on an annual basis, lends his uh, body and spirit and mind to the preservation of the roots pick, because it is exactly that. It is a page out of our history, and every year we have an opportunity to add additional pages. And so we send out this clarion uh, cry, uh, and I'm so pleased to be with you uh, and Paul today, Lenny, so that others who may not have heard of the Roots Picnic have a little better understanding of how it began, why it has continued, and why it is so necessary to have some form of fashion, of preservation in your neighborhood. And that's exactly what the Roots Picnic is, and it's aided by groups like the Breakfast Group, of which I am a part of, and uh, am very proud to be there because when they needed, uh, they meeting the Roots uh, Picnic, when the neighborhood needed an infusion of additional ideas and physical um, help and financial assistance, uh, those organizations, these organizations have been there and gladly do it without any compensation outside of the good feeling that we have in our heart, knowing that we are part of that history and part of that legacy. Well, well, thank you. Thank you for for the history uh, of it and uh, and for for letting us know where both of you stood uh, as it as it's been happening. Um, we did um, the way we're set up today. Um, our moderators would not um, Folks could hear them on the air, but you couldn't. So, uh, but they did uh, notify me that there is a, a few questions that came through, uh, and one of them okay. relates to the picnic. Um, in terms of, you know, you talked about what it's been and and what uh, and what you know we, what it's going to be a little bit. Uh, one of the questions that uh, I wanted to connect with that is. When we're, and this is a question from Karen, um, when we're able to gather together again, do you think the root celebration will be the same kind of an event, or do you think it will be organized differently? Let me take a, a shot at that first. You will always be able to recognize the root picture. We find ourselves being on what's called the I-90 lid of the I-90 floating bridge and the tunnel because we have three parks and the Northwest African American Museum that are located there. It's easily accessible by bus. All roads, we say, in our inner circle lead to the Roots Picnic. The Roots Picnic is always the first Sunday in September, Labor Day. What better time to gather uh, and have this wonderful cultural celebration? Because that is really uh, a major key. Uh, in answer to the question of the caller, yes, it has and will continue to grow. Because the public says, we want a little more of this, we want a little less than that. But the main thing is we want people of all walks of life, and certainly those who have history in the central area or know of it or even are curious to feel free and welcome to come and join us on an annual basis. The first Sunday in September, Labor Day weekend, don't have to get up early Monday morning to go to work because you had such a good time and you're tired from all of the activities and the festivities of the Roots Week. William? Another thing, can you hear me? 
Yep, yes. yeah, go ahead. Another thing that I'm really pleased of, uh, and to keep our picnic going, we, we have made sure that we infuse our committee with young people. We got, we got kids from junior high school, high school, and college. That's, on our, that's part of our committee. So we want to keep the, the youth flowing through our committee, our community, so we can keep this going. We don't want it to die out. So we, we work very hard every year to get it more and more of our young people involved. So we want to bridge the gap between young and old. And so we want them to have appreciation of our culture and the things that came before them so they can continue on in the future. I think we're doing a really good job, uh, you know, uh, doing our, uh, our festivities at the uh, picnic. We give away awards, and one thing we do give away is, is, is uh, scholarships to the school. And I think that's that's an uh, incentive. Uh, and plus, we have games, and we have all kinds of stuff for young people. We have music that just out of we have our best musicians in the city playing. You know, we have Josie Howell and Gabby Cabot and and uh, Lady. Buck, Buck, Buck Chandler and this band and and, uh, and uh, C T Thompson. You know, we get just we have in the past we have Woody Woodhouse and Dave Holden. Uh, we just have a litany of people that perform, and we don't get we don't pay. We, everything is about on a volunteer basis. So those are the kind of people we're involved with. That's what's going to keep us keep us growing for the years to come. Great. Thank you. It sounds like it's been really successful. That's one of the questions that came through. Um, and I just showed uh, the pictures, um, um, Paul, that you had sent me that included the award ceremonies and the performance. So folks just got to see them. Uh, and, and, and thank you for saying that this is an intergenerational approach. It sounds like that's that's the winning way. That's the way to to, to make it meaningful for everyone. Um, let me uh, uh, connect with that uh, a question that came through um, that says, uh, also from Karen, by the way, how is the breakfast group supporting black youth during the pandemic? Uh -huh. Yeah, I just, I just came from a, a, a meeting with our uh, breakfast group education uh, uh, department. Uh, it's all virtual. But we have uh, set up. We we are, we've set up. Now we can we do all our uh, uh, teaching, you know, through the air. I mean, we 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 don't go to classrooms anymore. It's, it's virtual through a central location, and we able actually we able to get to more people, more students. And then I want to tell you. Uh, we've had such success. I mean, this happened in the classroom. We just had another, we had just had a kid who just graduated from West Point uh, just past uh, June. Uh, and he was he went through our project management program. We had kids, you know, have graduated from Stanford, uh, MT, uh, MIT, uh, black colleges. That's another thing we do uh, as, a, as a breakfast group member. We, we have a, we had in the past uh, college tours that we did for like almost 20 years uh you know so we're we're really heavy into educating our black male youth so make them functional in this in this world we live in so you know we, we feel real good by the energy that we put out there for our community because we're really proud of our community we feel that our community have done a lot for everybody and we want to continually do the things that we do and not lose it because you know right now the central area you know, again i emphasize that you don't even recognize it. So everybody's in the South End now, mm. wherever. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, so, um, William, anything to add to that? And you may need to un unmute yourself if you do. How's that? That's great. Okay. Yeah, Paul actually capitalized all that we do. Um, and then there's more. There's always uh, that element that we don't get a chance necessarily to talk about. And, and that's that human element, that, that contact, that constant contact. We do not serve this community. We do not serve 
in anonymity or insiders. We are visible. You will see us in many different areas of this city as the breakfast group, as the Roots Committee, as those individuals who are involved in your uh, schools of education and also in your neighborhood. And uh, there aren't any restrictions as to who can come and help. Uh, if, if there is a willingness to put your signature in a positive way on the lives of others, they very well want to consider getting uh, even more involved, if not already involved, in your community. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that, William. Uh, here, I think related to that, um, there's a comment from uh, s someone in the chat that says, the young becomes the old. What are you contributing to changing lives of African-American community in the central area? If I'm still unmuted, I would answer that question by saying that one of the philosophies that I try to always adhere to is that I lead by example. I don't send anyone to do the work. I ask others to join the Paul Mitchell and the Ernie Dunstans and the Breakfast Group and, and the Roots Committee in its um, infinite participation to, to be there and to be there on a consistent basis because uh, there is uh, this picture of community involvement that is worth a thousand words that go along with it. We are involved, Paul consistently talks about the preservation of the central area, and he's at. I would take just a little different turn, and I say, much like the relationship that we have with our young people, Yes, we want to preserve the central area, but we also need to be reminded that in this day and age, there is expansion. But that expansion does not have the does not have to have the absence of our signatures. And we're going to continue to strive to do that. Thank you. Uh, Paul, anything to add? Well, yeah, I, I just. One, you know, just want to let people know if they if they interested in being involved in some things that we're doing, don't hesitate to get in contact with me or get in contact with William Lowe, and we can always use another body, uh, another person with some energy who want to give back, and who don't mind, you know, who don't mind giving, and, uh, and I think that's what we all have to do: share some of our talents and some of our energy with the ones who don't have as much as we might have. And so I, I am real pleased. I was, fortunately, I was raised that way by great mother. I always gotta give my mother the credit who I am and all my brothers. So I just wanna know, let you know that, you know, nobody can turn away and we can use any help we can get. That's great. And, and how can, uh, uh, Paul, uh, how can uh, people get in touch with you? We have a website. Yeah. Go to the breakfast uh, group website. Yes. You can do that. And root, the Roots uh, Picnic has a website. Okay. On their website. Yes. We are also approachable anytime you see us out in the neighborhood. If you'll come up and introduce yourself because you already have had the opportunity to either hear our voices or see our faces, we will respond in kind. I try never to talk to strangers until they introduce themselves to me. And once we know each other's names, then we have immediately had, uh, had established a bridge. And if we can bridge with our brothers and sisters, it is uh, wonderful what that uh, communication can do and the changes and contributions that we can make. Thank you, and I just showed the, the contact uh, uh, section of the website so folks can uh, refer to that. Uh, and the website is, I should say, uh, it's actually thebreakfastgroup.org, and, and then you can go from there. Uh, I think we have time for one more question here, uh, and, and it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an interesting one. Uh, how do you relate to the Black Lives Matter movement of today it's history am i still on yes you are yeah 
It's history. Every day, all lives matter. And the reason it is so significant to talk about Black Lives Matter is because we need to make sure that current, accurate information is in our textbooks. It needs to be in our classrooms. It needs to be in our homes. It needs to be in the signature that we are. And I love to use that word signature because I feel that it is most important for us to reach out every day and do something positive for someone else. I'm in the going home business. We'll talk about that another day. But at the end of life, I say at those ceremonies, if you would, from this point forward, reach out and touch somebody else's life in a positive manner. It may be to reach down to lift someone up who has fallen. It may be a hello to those who were never spoken to. It may be something as simple as a smile. And it all begins with you having the courage of conviction to introduce yourself to someone else and then taking the time to find out what their name is because a conversation is ensuing. The greatest fear that we have is the fear of the unknown. But once we introduce ourselves to each other in an earnest and a genuine way, we have immediately bridge that fear, because now at least I know who I'm talking with, and so do you. We don't always have to agree, but we certainly need to be our brother's keeper. And, and uh, William, and I'd like to add to that, is that I am so pleased, because you know I had almost given up hope about young people, and this Black Lives Matter movement had reinforced invigorated me and, and reinforced my belief in my young people because I felt for years, y'all guys, we, we're growing old and, and, and young people wasn't stepping up, taking, you know, and, and taking over. And now with this movement that's going on now, man, I think we might, our, our, our movement might be in good hands. Our young people are finally, you know, realizing that they need to step up, step forward and do something about their positions and their conditions that they live in. And they're not going to get anything we should go out and demand and, and almost take what you want. But then you also you have to get educationally, physically, and mentally ready to be involved in, in our society. You know, our society is not for the week in the week. So I think our, our young protesters is making a statement, and I am so pleased. Thank you. We have to take pride in what we do. And that's what I hear Paul saying when he talks about the relationship that we have with young people. They are proud of who they are and where they have come from. They are proud of the contributions that we have made in this country. And it is so genuine, you will notice that the world has picked up and has chanted, and continues to chant and to march and believe that yes, black lives do matter. And the part I don't know is just the part that I have not researched. Research begins with conversation and conversation begins with results. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Thank you for, that's that's really powerful. Um, you know, so, so important to know what the, the, the so-called movement the youth movement what it means to other generations that and and to hear that it, it's so meaningful that it gives you know at least at least it gives paul hope uh, uh and hopefully others as well uh, i i'm really 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 great to hear that yeah yeah and i know we're getting close to running out of time lenny but i uh, i offer you this and i offer you this free of charge the first chance you get Give me a call, we'll find a mutual meeting place, and I'll make sure that you learn how to tie a double Windsor tie and um, knot. You'll, uh, you'll be forever prepared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so as you can tell, uh, my office uh, in the middle of my living room, I, I can get away with wearing my, well, this is what I actually would wear at the picnic, right? You, you remember me looking exactly like this. So that's why I want to make sure yes. people recognize me. But uh, <laughs> but you're right. In some settings, I will certainly take you up on that. Uh, and I and I thank you for the offer. And thank you for being here, uh, William and Paul. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch over to uh, back to our presentation and wrap this up. Uh, but thank you for being here. Don't hang up just yet. Well, uh, let's check in at the uh, yeah, after the program is over. Sort of a that stay in good. the green room, so to speak. <laughs> All righty. Appreciate the invitation. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. And as we uh, as we continue, I, I'd like to thank uh, all of uh, you folks, everybody who was here today, and and that takes us back to uh, actually to the correct slide. Um, I I, I want to thank everybody who who joined us here today for your active participation, um, and. Uh, uh, whether you are doing that live uh, or you checking us out on YouTube, uh, we we certainly uh, appreciate your your being here, and we want to invite you to join our virtual community by uh, clicking subscribe and uh, the bell to to be notified when this uh, slightly edited version will will fix a couple of things, uh, maybe boost the sound a little bit, but this will end up on YouTube, so we'd like for you to know when that happens. Uh, and um, our YouTube channel is actually called Aging King County. Special thanks to Roots, the Breakfast Club, but also to the City of Seattle's Mayor's Council for African American Elders and the Parks Department. Yes. Both support the annual event in the park and both helped us promote this virtual celebration. Lastly, if you have a question about anything related to aging or disability, a reminder to go to communitylivingconnections.org for the list of member organizations near you, or just call them at 1-844-348-5464. Thank you again. Here's another picture from last year's picnic. At the table with me left to right are my colleagues, Karen Winston, who staffs the Mayor's Council on African American Elders, Brent Butler, who is the Age Friendly Seattle Program Manager, and my newest office mate, office mate, Larry Orlov, a seventh grader who is a devoted volunteer with Aging and Disability Services. We really do hope to see you here next week, here online and on the phone, and at the park next year. From all of us at Seattle Human Services, have a great Labor Day weekend that's filled with activities that are fun and relaxing, but most importantly, health conscious. We appreciate you all very much. Please take good care. <laughs>